Good morning, everyone. Happy 4th of July if you're in the United States. Uh, today is July 4th. It's uh, early, 8.30. Uh, my time, Eastern Standard, I think. <laughs> and I am in the camper. Uh, I would, this was like a crochet chit chat, but I mean a camper crochet, except that I'm inside because it rained really hard all night last night and everything outside is wet and chilly. Um, I'm sure it'll warm up a great deal once the sun comes out a little bit better. But it's kind of, it's starting to peek out through the clouds, but the sky is kind of gray right now still. Mm. So, I thought, um, while my curling iron heats up, don't mind the messy hair, but I went to bed with wet head last night, and this is what I wake up with. Uh, but it's heating. I thought I would get a little uh, kind of chit-chat in with you and see how everybody's doing. Wish everyone a happy 4th of July, uh, Independence Day, or just a good Tuesday. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, 4th of July falls during the week quite frequently here in the U.S., but it makes for a weird weekend when we have that hot one day in between uh, the weekend. It's kind of like a long weekend, but not. Uh, but we took the week off, so we are at the camper. Um, and Roy is next door having coffee. You might hear camper noises, uh, in the background, golf carts, dogs, people, who knows? Uh, even though I'm inside, I do have all the windows open and no air conditioning on. I broke my favorite tripod. So I went to that local Mark's store. Totally love that store. If you're from Ohio, Northern Ohio anyway you don't shop there, you really miss it out because the closeouts can be really awesome. But I bought a new tripod. Um, it's not a tripod. It's a stand. But it's tabletop. It does go up and down just a little. And it's got two mounts for your phone that you can swivel around and rotate. And then it's got a ring light on it that changes colors and intensity. So I'm trying this out. I hope it works out okay. It was... Uh, at Mark's, so it was cheap, uh, which I totally love. Uh, I'm really disappointed that I broke the other one. It, it uh, telescoped a lot taller and folded up a lot smaller. So I'm going to leave this one at the camper, uh, and then I don't have to worry about transporting back and forth. And I have a big ring light at home, um, and I have it up in the attic for you know, because that was supposed to be where I filmed. <laughs> but, you know, three flights of stairs and I never make it up there. <laughs> uh, and I do like that ring light. It's really a nice light. Uh, it's just that it's in the attic. But I'm going to order, I think, a new another tripod like the one I had that I broke. Uh, just for... It's easy to use on multiple surfaces. You know, depending on the height. But it doesn't, like, I can't use it in my golf cart. I can't use it in my car. Because, um, I can't. Uh, it doesn't sit, you know, it doesn't mount. It just sits. But I saw one, uh, when we went to Best Buy yesterday. And they had a really nice one with a microphone and a light. Not a ring light, but a light. And it was adjustable. I think it was adjustable height. But it had a microphone on it, and I'm like, ooh, I wonder if that could be good. And how does it work? So if you are um, from, oh, we got a moth in the house. Great. If you are at all familiar with any recording for any reason, what do you think of that kind of setup? How does that, It had, the microphone was like this long and covered in foam. And how do you hook that up to your phone and how how what do you think of that kind of situation, you know, kind of setup? If you've ever used it, if you have any experience, um, I would love to know. Because maybe I'll invest in that versus, you know, just the... Oh, this coffee is so good this morning. <laughs> um, versus just what I've been doing. So, you know, recording completely off the phone. Uh, so let's see, what do I have to talk to you about? Uh, I have started again on my knit project so knit happens thank you laura my bestie um from mad mimi's crochet and farming uh love her to death 
this is what we're making. It's a double dog dare. Oh, wait, am I in the picture? Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, it is the uh, Chunky Knit Throw by... Oh, good Lord. I'm so organized here. Uh, let's see. Fall Cuddler Chunky Blanket. Um, and I think it's Mama in a Stitch. Yeah. Mama in a Stitch. And this is the brainstorm of Mad Mimi's Crochet and Farming. Uh, Laura to knit a blanket for those of us that don't knit. Now she has really outdone herself. She went, she started taking a class and that woman is knitting awesome, awesome items. She's knitting with color work, uh, hats from the national parks, knit the national parks. They're fabulous. It's so cool. Um, I am knitting with the help of Knit 101, <laughs> which is a book I found at, I believe, Ollie's. So, hey, babe. Um, and it has some knit projects in it, but it teaches you the how to do it step by step. I was still doing stitches wrong, uh, even with YouTube videos. <laughs> I think I got it worked out now. I don't know how to tell the right side from the wrong side on most stitches. Except for the stitch that looks like these. I don't know if that's garter stitch or uh, stockinette stitch. I don't know. Um, the one that's supposed to look like this. I can tell the front and back from. Any other stitch, I don't know what's the front and what's the back. This stitch here that we started like our ribbing with, it looks the same front and back to me up close. Now I did put a stitch marker. I put this pin in here to be the stitch marker to say which was my right side and which was my wrong side. But I think it has kind of, well, maybe sometimes I think it's on the wrong side. Um, I think it's because this looks like this should be the right side. So then I think then, um, but this, if you can see, it's on the wrong side of this. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, because the stitch marker is on the other side. So my blanket is not going to have a right or wrong side. It's just going to be completely whatever. We have gotten far enough on it that we're repeating the, the rows. Not this first part right here. This is the bottom of the blanket, so that's like the border. And it goes all the way around, even... Um, on the sides which is kind of cool it gives you that same texture i'm i'm loving the knitting uh i'm i'm none of it is right <laughs> i don't care <laughs> i'm just going with it i'm crossing my fingers that i don't lose a stitch because i don't know how to fix it i know you use a crochet hook i don't want to have to go there yet i just want to get through the blanket so there are sections, and this section I know is completely wrong. This, uh, this section I think I did right. Then there's this little thing here. I don't know if that's right or wrong. Then there's this that's completely wrong. Um, then the next section... You know what? I have to take this watch off. I always get it. It always sticks to my, um, crochet, my yarn. Then there's, anyway, this section with all these bumpies on it. I think that's the double moss stitch and some of it is right. Then we have this that's supposed to look like the V's on the front but I think I did it backwards and my V's are on the back. Uh, then we did this two together thing which I think I did that okay. Um, and then you were supposed to start on the right side and make the V's again for four rows. Mine are on the wrong, mine are not on the same side as the V's of the first. So one of them is backwards. <laughs> um, and I think, I think it's my big section down here because 
my stitch marker is on this side and this is the side that I do not have the V's on at the bottom but the V's are on on this part so I don't care I like the look of it both ways well that phone call interrupted me sorry uh, what was I saying um as far as the knit blanket goes uh I don't care if it's got the wrong side on the right side or whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's just going to be, for me, it's soft and cozy and cuddly, and I love it. And I'm learning the stitches, even though I, I was getting better at knowing as they're coming off, if I was on the, you know, for the, for the V part of it, I was getting better at knowing if I was on the, front side for that current section or the back side for that current section but I worked up a month in advance and now and then I forgot everything that I had learned because <laughs> I didn't touch it for a month and I went back to it earlier this week over the weekend and I'm like well I don't know if I'm supposed to start on the I don't know I, I wasn't I did it wrong I'm not pulling it out um, because it, it doesn't matter to me that much. It, it actually doesn't matter to me at all if it's on the right side or the wrong side um, because none of it is correct through the whole section. Well, this one, this V-stitch section I think is correct. I think all the stitches are correct. I didn't lose anything, but I think I did it on the wrong side. I think this I did correctly. If I didn't, I don't know what's wrong with it. I think it's supposed to look the way it looks with the holes in it. Except, like, right here, maybe there should have been a bigger hole. I don't, I don't know. It kind of, it worked out, everything. So, if there's wrong stitches in there, I don't know enough to know. And no one that there's one person that I know that would see this blanket and say oh you did that wrong um because there's only one person that I know that is physically in my space <laughs> like a physical friend that knits <laughs> and um she would understand that it's and I should actually show this I'm going to be seeing her soon and I should actually show it to her and see what she thinks uh just to get her opinion But none of my friends that I like have physical contact with or family knits or crochets. So anything I make, I could screw up really bad and nobody that will see it in person will ever know. <laughs> so that's good with this because nobody knows, nobody cares. They're just going to say, boy, mom, that's really cool. Oh, I love that blanket. It's so soft and squishy. And I'm going to be like, yeah, I know. I like it. <laughs> And I'm not going to have to tell them that, oh, yeah, but I screwed it up here and here and here and here. Because I'm just proud of the fact that knock on wood, wherever any wood is around here, I haven't dropped a stitch. But I did put my lifeline back in. You can see the red in there. Uh, I'm not going too far without a lifeline. So I think this section, and now we're going to go back to the bumpy section, I think. It's the knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, and then the next row you purl where you knitted and you knit where you purled. Um, and I need a bunch of stitch markers for that. And I don't know if I brought enough because every four stitches, if you put a stitch marker in, um, when you have to change, you knit two, then you purl two, then you knit two, then you purl two. So on the first row, the when you hit the stitch marker, you know you got to knit two and then purl two and on the next row you got to purl to then knit to every time you hit the stitch marker you got to purl again um it's the hard part is knowing which row you're on the knit row or the purl row so i you know what comes first out of the section of four so i wrote it down so hopefully because i know when i did that last time i you did three rows but i never knew which way i was starting <laughs> with the knits or the purls i just knew when i got to the stitch marker i had to change my stitch i have fibers all over my nose uh, so excuse me, but um, because of that, I know there are times that 
like it's not right in here. It's just all bumpy and, and messy. Uh, you might want to say because some places there's these where they're not supposed to be these. I purled where I purled or knitted where I knitted. But that's because I didn't know which row I was supposed to be on. Because I wasn't smart enough to understand. Um, not, it's not a smart thing. It's a knowledgeable thing. But now I have all that knowledge. <laughs> I wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> so I can cross off my row and know where I am. So if I, and, and I need to do, I think Friday, I was supposed to finish the first row of knit two purl to the first section of four. I think like I took a week, I took a month off of it because I got, I was ahead. I finished the whole, this whole section in advance. Once I started it, I'm just like, oh, I'm going to do the whole thing while I know what I'm doing in my head. And I enjoyed doing it very much. So now with this, um, and then I was camping in, in Allegheny and I wasn't bringing this with me there. Uh, so now I think I'm a week behind, I think. But I just watched Laura and she said something about now we're starting the knit two pearl two. So maybe I'm right where I should be. Uh, like by Friday, I have to have the knit two purl two first section of knit four rows. Now we're doing, um, so I, I think that might be it. If I have the stitch markers, if I have enough with me, um, I will do that. And I'm anxious to do it because I really enjoy working on it. I am enjoying learn the process of learning this. And this blanket is going to be so cuddly literally I'm using a five weight yarn it calls for a six weight but I didn't have enough yarn in six weight that I liked using with this project um but I am using I guess you might want to know that I am using um a yarn that I got in clearance from Hobby uh no yeah from Hobby Lobby uh yarn be lots of dots they don't carry it anymore uh, it's 100% acrylic, it, I think. Nope, nope, I lied. It's 60% acrylic, 40% polyamide, and it is a number five, and it is so squishy soft. I mean, you really just, it'll be like on a cold winter's night, the best thing to curl up with on your couch. Um, it says to use 6.5 millimeter knitting needles, um... U.S. size 10 and a half, U.K. size 3, or an 8 millimeter crochet hook, which would be a U.S. L11 or a U.K. 0. So I don't understand that. But I am using 10 millimeter. I mean, it's, well, yeah. I'm using 10 millimeter attached needles. Um, What are they called? Circulars? They're, they're not interchangeable though. They're just, I just bought them specifically for this project uh, to determine if I liked them. You know, if I could figure out the whole knitting process. I should be like Laura and go to a class. I just don't have time for that right now. So um, maybe one day I will go to a class or I'll get my friend to sit down with me and really show me how to do what I'm trying to do here. But the projects that I was gonna need like whole, 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 whole bunches, uh, nine or 12 or something skeins of yarn it was calling for a six weight. And I think I was supposed to need uh, nine or better skeins of six weight yarn. Uh, there are, I forgot to tell you how many, this is a hundred grams, 3.5 ounces, 110 yards, 101 meters. Um, and it's a bulky, not a super bulky. So I used this yarn because I had a lot of it and I know the blanket's not going to be as big as what is uh, Mom in a Stitch made because I'm using a smaller yarn. But I have a lot of it, but that's, we're like, I think halfway done-ish and we're only, uh, I'm only on the third skein of yarn. I believe I had nine of them. So, we'll see what happens there. <laughs> um, I finished my luck of the draw, and I'm going to give that to my granddaughter this weekend uh, as part of her birthday present, the tote that I made. 
I showed it to you in the last video. Uh, I do have it here, but it's in the back room. And I finished the look of the draw, uh, I mean the Yarn Vacation AU with Judy from Witch Piece Crafts. And look of the draws with Nan from Nan's Next Knots. Uh, those, everybody will be linked. Hi, Judy. Hi, Nan. Um, I enjoyed both of those crochet lines. The luck of the draw, I will always do with Nan. Um, and doing the uh, tote was a fabulous, fabulous thing to do for luck of the draw. It didn't take that long every week, which, depending on what you make, it shouldn't take too long. Um, anyway, because it's only, you know, a few rows or whatever. But I love the project at the end. It, it turned out to be a, a great idea, and I really liked it. So I finished those, and I started to work on my multivalence. I brought that to work on, along, along with, like, some things I haven't uh, picked up in a while. So I brought the multivalence, and I wanted to start it. And... It was like later in the evening and I'm like, oh no, I don't remember. I don't even know what they're talking about. I am think I think I'm just starting part three or part four. I'm way behind. And I I need to be able to sit down with some of my yarn friends in Zoom and say, What are they talking about? I, I have to like reread the previous part of the pattern watch some videos because there's a spike stitch involved and I remember I don't remember really what you do with the spike stitch um so I have to watch a video or two and figure out where the spike stitches are to even know what I, where I'm supposed to start on the row that I'm currently on so I'm not going to show you that because I didn't do anything to it but I started another project I know I know I know I still have crochet alongs I'm not done with I know but I've been promising my um, one granddaughter, remember I made her that really big, if you've been around for a while, you saw that really huge Yoda. I tripled the yarn and made this really big Yoda for her. It's probably two foot tall and his head is like this big around. Um, <laughs> I, if I have a picture, I'll try to put it in here. I don't know. I, I have one somewhere. If I can find it, I'll try to put it in the video and show you the big one. And so her, she has a little cousin from her mom's side that keeps trying to steal Yoda. And I told her I would make a Yoda for that little cousin. So I finally am starting the Yoda. Uh, let's see. Don't mind the crinkle of Janine around in my bag. Oh, there is no picture with this. Um, be friends. Uh, beef is it at B friends crochet is where the pattern came from I don't remember if I paid for it or I know you know what it's free it's um baby Yoda free amigurumi crochet by at B friends crochet um I am using a five millimeter hook with my four millimeter Karen one pounder I mean uh four weight Karen one pounder I'm just I'm not going to stuff it as full so that the stuffing doesn't come out. Um, but the head is way bigger than I anticipated it be. <laughs> and I brought safety eyes that are not big enough. <laughs> <coughs> when I went to put the eyes in, this is the head. Didn't take very long to make this. Uh, I did it while we were driving to the meat market. Um, mostly anyway, driving there and on the way back. And we got back and I'm like, oh, I got to put the eyes in. And I didn't bring big enough eyes because the head is bigger than I anticipated. Because I'm using, I think I used a, wait, I wrote it down. Yeah, I used a four millimeter hook. And they were saying to use a two and a half millimeter hook. I'm like, there's no way I'm doing that. Uh, I, I would just be splitting the yarn all the time. So I went with the bigger hook. I'm pretty sure that's what she says to use. Uh, yeah, she says, and I don't know. She says she used this yarn. And I don't know what the weight is of that yarn. I did not use that yarn. I am using Karen One Pounder. And uh, for the jacket, it's a big twist, I, I think. So anyway, I can't continue because the head and the body on him are one piece. 
I can't continue with this until I can get the face on. And I don't, I don't want to, I have bigger eyes at home. I just didn't bring them. And I don't want to crochet them necessarily because I want them to be the big shiny for the safety eyes. Uh, I could crochet them, but I just don't like the, necessarily the look of that on Yoda because his eyes are dark and, and, and shiny. Um, and I didn't bring any black yarn anyway, so I couldn't make them if I wanted to. So it's holding me up on the body to continue. I'm not going to stuff it. I did bring the stuffing, but I'm not, and it's probably going to take more stuffing than I anticipated because it's way bigger than what I thought it was going to be, which is completely fine. So I did start the jacket as well because baby Yoda wears a jacket. So I started it and this is how far I got on it, the first four rows and I'm using a six millimeter hook with it because she tells you to use a bigger hook on the coat than you did on the, on the um, body. Uh, but without having any part of the body done, I'm a little nervous to make the coat and not make it big enough. I think we'll be okay. I mean, it's yarn. I can stuff it, right? And this is a big twist. Um, I think I have, yep. And it's all left over from the one that I made for uh, Maddie. This is big twist in the color taupe. And this is succulent, I think. Yeah, the green is succulent from Karen One Pounder. So I did start that just because I had promised her like a long time ago, Christmas, that I would make this. And I haven't done it yet. So I thought, oh, this week is a perfect week to do it. And now I can't even do it. We'll see. Maybe I'll stop at a store and see if they have safety eyes. I don't think that Joanne or Michaels really sells safety eyes. Um, I, I, they have like sew on ones. I like googly eyes that stick on. I don't want that uh, for sure. I don't want that. Um, I'm giving it to a five year old and I think she will pull them off. The safety eyes, we have a much better chance of staying on. Um, so anyway, that is what I've been working on this week at the camper. Um, like I said, I did finish the, the tote and started now this new project and Chloe was here over the weekend, her and her boyfriend, and she asked there, she's, um, staying in a dorm with several of her sorority sisters or is she staying in the sorority house? I don't know. But anyway, they're going to have movie night with the sororities and with the, her roommates. I can't remember where she's staying, but anyway, there's going to be movie night. And she has asked if I would make her a blanket that will be big enough for like four of them to cuddle up in on the couch watching movies on movie night. And I said, of course I would do that. I'm excited as heck to do that. So she's going to see what colors they would like or how they would like it. Then I have to pick out a pattern and I don't want it to be whole. I want it to be soft and squishy. Um, so if you guys have any ideas on something not too intricate, I want it to be rectangular so I can make it longer than it is wide, uh, long enough to cover, you know, the four girls and be cuddly. Uh, so I want it to be rectangular shape, um, not a circle, not, yeah, it's got to be a rectangle. So patterns, big rectangular, not full of holes, but really squishy, um, and comfy, uh, drapey. I, I love, I love the, um, blanket that I'm making for the, with the knit blanket, because that's all of those things. Um, but it's not going to be big enough and I don't have enough yarn for that. And it would take me 65,000 years to knit a blanket that size. I can crochet it quick, quicker anyway. So if you have suggestions, please let me know. 
um, again, I don't know what colors. Someone here at the campground suggested she goes to Case Western Reserve University. So do their colors and just like uh, uh, I, in a corner to corner, probably like a graph GAN and just put, you know, C, W, R, U on it for Case Western Reserve University. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I want something more simple than that because it's going to be big and I don't have to. I mean, I don't mind. Uh, I want it to be an easy repeat. I was thinking, um, I love the viral, virus stitch. And I know you can do that in a square blanket, right? Can, can you do that in a rectangle like a virus meets granny? I know it's a lot of holes, but... Um, or maybe something similar to that that's not a granny in the like part of it's the virus stitch part of it's more solid than a granny then there's that one stitch that uh, I'm gonna have to ask Nancy about it she was doing and last year she made several blankets it was like granny but then there was a change of color in the middle uh, and then she made the hat out of it and uh, cinnamon stitches made an ornament out of the same stitch several people made different things um, I'm gonna have to ask I can't I can't remember what the stitch is. I did make a blanket out of that stitch but I don't know can you do that in a in a I mean I don't know why you couldn't uh, Nancy will have to help me hey Nan uh, Nancy from she's got yarn too who is doing pretty good all in all, she's doing really, really well. She's making videos again, so uh, that's exciting. If you haven't seen her, she will be linked in my description box below as well. Um, oh, yeah, and then somebody else suggested that you do the blanket in sections and every girl gets to pick their like favorite color. So you do like a four-foot section of pink for the one girl and purple for the next girl and that could be cool um so I can't wait to hear what they come up with but I think it's probably going to be a lot you know it's going to be my my decision on on a pattern and I want it soft and squishy and drapey and cozy <laughs> you know um to curl up on to curl up with while they're watching a scary movie and can hide <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't mind my laundry hanging up over there. <laughs> I, did, I, should, I guess I should have closed the bathroom door. Uh, but anyway, let me know what you think of the lighting in this. I think the lighting on this uh, looks pretty good because, uh, you know, with the ring light, I think it's better lighting than I've had in the past inside the camper. Uh, it is an overcast day still, so... But it has been 45 minutes or ish. So I gotta let you go. We are off to do things today. We're going to, we're going to get his phone fixed and then we're going to a festival and then we're going to a minor league baseball game in Akron. I think it's the rubber ducks and fireworks. So yay, that'll be a really um, good day today. So happy 4th of July. Thanks for liking, watching, sharing all of those wonderful things, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.